all right guys this is the video you've been waiting for uh been saying i was going to do the charger overview it's really not that much to it uh, a lot of this is going to be probably uh done on the screen because there will be links that i have to link so you guys can pretty much understand uh, what i'm talking about or have some type of visual representation for this parameters that i'm putting into it so this is an elcon tc uh, uhf 3300 watt uh, ev charger it's not made specifically for a zero motorcycle it's made for pretty much any electric car you can get them in the 3300 uh, 3000 300 watt version you get a 6600 and then they have a 9.9 .9 kilowatt uh model so i got the 3300 obviously because it's the smallest and it's important to note that when you're charging out in the streets there's a lot of times where you won't even have 4,000 watts available to you if there's another car charging at a station or uh, maybe the charging station itself only supplies 3.3 uh, kilowatts so this one was the best uh, for compatibility and for my motorcycle um, also there is a thing with the zero batteries that if you charge it at 1c or uh, anything around 1c I think all the way up to 0.8 C's uh, which is um, I mean, it's like basically 0.8 of the battery's capacity uh, it will continuously heat while it's charging and then it will eventually shut down or stop charging operations due to heat so at 3.3 kilowatts which is roughly 0.5 C's uh, the battery will not cool down but it will not heat up um, generally that's just you know that's not a fact that's just the general consensus for this battery um, i'm not an electrical engineer i'm not a professional or any matter just some random dude doing this stuff in his own spare time uh, yeah excuse my mat it's pretty dirty i also use this mat for working on drones so we'll start with the front right here we have is basically what i i call my power key um, it's basically just a shorted wire. Uh, if you look inside of here, I took off the rubber plug. Ah, that's annoying. Anyway, so inside of here is a key. As, I mean, it's just two wires. It's the positive and negative shorted together. And what this does is give the charger an enable signal to allow you to start charging. Uh, it's important to use this basically just as a key. So uh, um, the order of charge for this bike is I plug in the plug the J1772 into the rear um, and then that gives the onboard charger a chance to start up and then uh, it gives the charge enable signal to the bike and then I either plug this key in most of the time I usually leave it plugged in and then I plug in the main charge cable into the battery and that will allow this to do the fast charge so that's what this is and this is just if you get one like this and you don't get it uh, with the BMS communications or what is it called? Uh, CAN bus communications for the onboard battery management system. Uh, just use this as a key that way um, when you want to finish charging or you want to unplug it all of a sudden, better than pulling out you know a live 96 volts with um, some odd 20, 30 amps going through it. You just pop this out disables the charger there's now no current flowing through this or a very little amount of current and it's safe to unplug everything else uh, speaking of this so that's that's just the enable cable I did have to replace this it's this not the stock uh, connector that came with the charger someone stole my last charging cable um, so I had to make a new one so now we have the main cable for the battery to the bike I removed some of the rubber shielding beforehand so you wouldn't have to Bear with me going through all that. I'm try and peel back some of this other um, wire loom. So this is the part that plugs into the charger itself. So plugs into the second port. And just like that, you have push release, super easy. You can get these on Amazon for super cheap. Uh, I think this one was about 20 something dollars if you ever have to make your own. Uh, one connotation to that is that the interior of this charger is completely potted with epoxy. So in order for you to get access to leads on this and desolder them on the board, which I don't really recommend doing unless you're really confident with your soldering skills, um, you'll have to dig out the potting and then replace it to maintain that waterproofness and shock durability. 
Um, so, uh, let me uh, get a zoom in here. So, these two leads, uh, you can't see them here. Let me see if I can focus. There we go. Hopefully you can see the numbers here. Uh, there's, uh, it's like a, is it numbers or it's alphabet? It's numbers. So it's one, two, or one, three, and two and four. The odd numbers are electrically equivalent. And what that means is that these two share the same uh, power output as these two. Uh, that's important to note because if you wire this incorrectly, what you'll be effectively doing is making it short. And when you plug it in and expect it to charge, well, congratulations, you just shorted your battery and you're gonna have a very bad day. Um, now, the reason that these two are electrically equivalent is because obviously one of these pins is pretty thin uh, gauge, so it wouldn't be able to support the full amount of current traveling through these pins um, just by one. You know, one of them wouldn't support 20 amps. So they put two of them to reduce resist resistance overall and reduce the amount of heat generated when charging. This is an Anderson SBS BN, I think. Uh, I'll just throw the link in there, that might be wrong. SBS 75X, that's what it's called. It's right on the label. Um, and in order for you to make this, this connects to the Zero uh, battery pack, the quick charger right, in, uh, right beneath the battery. In order to make this, uh, you'll buy this. I got these from either Mauser or Online Components, something like that. Um, you will need a crimper, but probably not a crimper that you have in the house unless you do a lot of work like this. So, let's see. This is a hydraulic crimper. Make some space here. You can get this on Amazon for probably about $50, $49.95. Pretty handy tool. It's a little messed up. Let's see what's in the mic. Um, and this is what you'll need in order to get big beefy boy connectors crimped on to what I used was two 10 gauge cabling uh, wires or conductors whatever you want to call them and the one I used is the number 16 so you can get the camera to focus come on buddy you know how we're working with me today there you go so this is the 16 or number 16 die um, and it's pretty simple all you do is open Oh, that shit is off. You got turned on. And then the hydraulic fluid gets pumped in there. And you'll see this little piston comes out. And that'll crimp the wire for you. Another thing I did, instead of just crimping it. Get in there, bud. Whatever, that's good enough. So, another thing I did, uh, instead of just crimping it, which I'm sure probably would have been fine. I also soldered the leads in here. Actually, I think I might be able to pull this out. Give me one second. There is a little tab uh, inside of the connector. I'm gonna show you what I'm doing here in case you ever have to rework this. Why aren't you focusing? There we go. So inside of here, there's a little metal tab. So you see this little, this is the main connector. To the side of it, you'll see there's a tab. You just press that down and then you pull on this. So that's what I'm doing right now. So I can show you guys how I did this. All right. So inside of here, uh, I also, you can see it crimped. That's the, but, so you can see right here, that's where the crimping is. That's why it looks all hexagonal, but I also, um, as general, just to reduce any resistance and give it a little more durability, I assume. Uh, I held, held it upside down and then I soldered it in there. And then I crimped it. Uh, I guess it would work either way, but the solder flows a little better when you, uh, when you just don't have it crimped. It's a little more space for it to flow into there. And I did that for both sides. And the wire I used was two 10 gauge uh, high flexibility silicone wire or is it 12 gauge 12 gauge not 10 gauge 12 gauge my bad um, and you can get I think about 25 feet of this wire 
We got some right here, still left over. So you can get about 25 feet for both, you know, positive and negative wire online. Yeah, it's 12 gauge. Uh, pretty cheap. It's not a. It's pretty useful if you're gonna be doing stuff like this, especially you messing around with the bike. Well, you wouldn't be able to tell with this, but it's important to have a multimeter when you're gonna do any type of electrical work. Um, it's another thing to show um, the electrical equivalence of certain ports. So, to give an example, I also did this with my cables to make sure I had them the right way. So, put this to continuity, and we're gonna test the one and three. And you're gonna see that it's gonna go off, showing that there is a closed circuit. See, and that means that those are electrical. If you do three and two, nothing, no beep. One and three, beep. Two and four, beep. So those are the same. Don't get those mixed up. If you get these mixed up, that's also a big deal, but uh, just be careful with those. I can't really show you that right now, but honestly, if you can do these wires, this is just one different wire, and if you were doing this in the first place, you should understand what ground positive and uh, return is. And there's an electrical code for that where they all follow the same rule. You can cut apart any uh, 1600 watt or 20 amp rated C14 cable or higher and get the, um, the kind of leads you need. Um, to show you what a C14 cable is, it's your basic PC cable that plugs into any computer power supply. Well, most computer power supplies. So this is a C14. As you can see, it has the three prongs. And this one is actually rated for 15 amps. Oh, that's the wrong side, hold on. Where's the amperage? Here it is. It's a little dirty. This one's rated for 15 amps at 125 volts, which is more than sufficient for the 750 watt onboard charger. The one that you use for the fast charger would be 20 amp rated. Uh, so a little thicker gauge. You can find them on Amazon, as most of these things. Uh, they come with a three prong cable. You know, nothing unusual here. You see them on your extension cable or power tool. And uh, when you get this cable on Amazon, what you're gonna do is you're gonna cut this off or cut it to whatever length you need. Uh, you can either throw this away or keep it. I usually keep them because you never know, you might need it for something. Uh, and then inside you're going to have three wires and you're going to separate them, you're going to strip them, and then you're going to solder them and heat shrink them or heat shrink and solder them. Make sure you do the heat shrink first. If you guys want a soldering tutorial, I guess I can do that too, but I assume that most people are able to YouTube that on their own. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it for this uh, charger. It's not that much to it, man. It's pretty simple. So a couple of things for the parameters of the setup for uh, zero FXS. Um, the charging voltage is gonna be, I think 116.2 fully charged or 116.4. Yeah, 116.2 is gonna be your full charge voltage. Um, I recommend that you go below that. I would do 116 flat instead of 0.2. Give yourself some tolerance because these things don't always come exactly as they should. Uh, it's set for 110 amp hours. I'm not exactly sure if that's the amp hours of the battery. I did order this like a year and a half ago, so I can't remember all the exact parameters. Uh, I don't really think the amperage matters because this isn't talking to the charger at all. So I really don't think the amp hours matters. If you had uh, the CAN bus communication installed on here, if you wanted to do the Arduino route, uh, then the amp hours would matter because it would communicate to the charger uh, how much uh, capacity has been filled in the battery already and it would taper off or adjust accordingly. Um, any other important specifications? Oh yeah, uh, if you order from, I think it's uh, Electric Convergence or not Electric Convergence, where did I order this on? Maybe it's Electric Convergence. Uh, and it's important that you get the 90 to 264 VAC because there is a version that only does like 220 to 264 or something. So you won't be able to plug it into a normal wall outlet and pull 1600 watts, um, which is fine if you only plan to use this for charging at the, at the quick charging station, quick charging stations. But um, every now and then I need a quick charge at home and this will pull 1600 watts. 
which is 600 watts more than the zero supply QE key Q QE Q whatever the quick charging station uh, quick charger they offer which is only a thousand watts so it gives you the extra 600 watts which helps a lot if you want to charge real quick at your house uh, this is the fan adapter whatever uh, I hot glued it so the water gets in there um, and then I put on a normal PC fan adapter so I can plug in just about any normal PC fan Let's see, I've got one right here from my old gaming PC build and you just plug in a normal PC fan and then bam you have a cooling fan for your charger uh, I of course have a custom server PC fan built into the the tail or the fender of the Zero, um, which puts out a lot more air than a normal fan does. Uh, it's also loud as dick, but uh, it keeps this cool. Um, and these chargers get it okay for me. Um, as you can see, it's pretty beat to shit. That's because I've off-road it with it and found some flaws in my um, previous design for the um, subframe to mount this on, because it is, it is a pretty chunky size. Uh, dense amount of weight to put over the rear end of the bike um, but it's held up fine I've had no problems with this it's worked really consistently so uh, that's pretty much it for this charger um, if you guys want um, I guess more detail or actual walkthrough for everything uh, I'm gonna need some donations because this stuff isn't cheap for me to be just buying and doing it for the 12 people that watch these videos but if you want to send me your connector or whatever, and I'll do a demonstration for it, and I guess someone to get a free connector, uh, you send it to me. It doesn't take long. It takes maybe about uh, an hour for me to do at this point because I've done it two or three times. Um, and then you'll have a walkthrough for whenever you want to do yours, and whoever wants to watch these videos gets a, a walkthrough for when they want to buy theirs. Um, yeah, so that that could be an option if you want to just send me your connector, and I can do a demo for one of those and send it back to you. Uh, but uh, that's it for this charger. I guess the next video would be how I make the subframe. Uh, I am going through and remaking the subframe with some thicker aluminum now. Uh, so keep stay posted for a video on that. Also, if you guys want uh, more consistent updates or just to see what's going on in between the videos, I have an Instagram where I pretty much put a lot of my zero stuff on there um, on my story. And uh, that's the Envisioneer. I'll make sure to throw a link in the bottom. Um, and I'll keep you guys more up to date about things going on in between the videos. So that's it wrapping up and uh, thanks for watching.